maybe the creativity is not shown in an answer paper maybe that is not even accepted sometimes there are a lot of questions i'm glad that parents are having queries i think schools do not kill but we love the word creativity but how often do parents ask a teacher how creative is my child one of the very popular ted talks by sir ken robinson on do schools kill creativity caught the attention of the world sir ken robinson says creative work is a process not just an event if this is true do schools make kids creative beings or kids are being creative by birth or do parents play a vital role in nurturing creativity today we shall dwell into whether schools and parents help in creativity nurturing i'm happy to welcome panel members who are seasoned dynamic and passionate education leaders the first member is mrs kalpna mohan presently she is an executive director at academy for creative teaching bangalore the second member is mrs parimela l k she is a principal at shashadipuram public school elanka bangalore the third member is mrs surabhi yamani ayengar she is a principal at Young Scholars Academy, Bangalore. I would like to take a first reaction on the TED Talk, which has become a rage uh, for a lot of educators to see uh, on Sir Ken Robinson on do schools kill creativity? Do you believe schools kill creativity? Thank you very much, Santosh, for that beautiful question. And I had actually checked with the the same TED Talk what Ken Robinson have done it. He makes beautiful three four statements he made, and I'm adding my own uh, thought process to it. what he said is if something is not going wrong then the creativity is not there whenever we have some crisis we come up with new new solutions and what that's what we call it as creativity normally we have uh, so many definitions for creativity creativity is not created all humans are already creative only starting from inventing wheels to fire be ignited people were creative without the creativity the world wouldn't have existed at all this planet wouldn't have existed at all today what exactly happening in and around us is thought process and creativity but it is not made up it's all inborn in the people the question what is asked is do schools kill creativity is the very very pertinent and at the same time very very we have to think very much about that question schools cannot kill creativity children are always allowed to do certain things which they want to do only thing is they're bound by certain set of rules and regulations in the school because they have their, t- their timings they have their subjects to be taught and things like that but anywhere and every place a teacher always identify a child who is more creative maybe the creativity is not shown in an answer paper maybe that is not even accepted sometimes but nowadays the application oriented and experiential learning is bringing in lot of changes in the education system i am not talking about the systems which were there only in the medieval time i am talking about indian gurukula system where creativity is the pinnacle it was in the highest level so they were all allowed to do things what they know how to do or they do differently also so a lot of examples lot of things can be brought in here but i can just tell you children were always creative and they were always encouraged by the school probably the question and answer during an examination may not have that kind of opportunity to give some kind of creativity but still the children were supported to develop their skills creative skills today education 4.0 insist on 21st century learning skills such as communication collaboration creativity and critical thinking and also bloom's taxonomy which is revised which is giving the work called creativity on the top of the pyramid and it is there from the year 2000 and most of the schools are talking about it in a big way then where the creativity will go i will never agree uh, any school for that matter can kill the creativity of the child but one thing again the systems the examination patterns and the testing methodologies are somewhat bringing it down to a little some extent but creativity can never die in schools projects are made children are allowed to do things on their own and how they will kill the creativity it is not there today yesterday or day before it is there from so long i started a career 37 years ago from 1982 i'm seeing how creative the children are we have given that kind of support to the children so as far as i know 
schools can never ever kill creativity of the children possibly if you call creativity as a matter it's a small area of concern then it is not correct it's a wide big topic it's not it and schools can never kill creativity that's my opinion yeah wonderful mrs kalpana mohan i think uh, you brought a very I, different perspectives about it uh, i would like to now ask uh, madam surubi uh, to share her views on the ted talk of uh, ken robinson he claims or he brings a points for us to us are ask questions to us saying do schools kill creativity definitely over here i am with kalpana ma'am i do not believe in this statement either it is unfair if you tag this line to schools the very experience that the children have for the 13 uh, long years that they stay with us i think uh, they learn to explore they learn to observe they learn to experiment and they learn to nurture their talents in this school zone that makes all the difference yes the environment is controlled they are guided but they are guided for certain reasons alone i would say some uh, learn visually some are inclined towards uh, performing arts some are inclined towards maths and some towards language varied exposure is only given so that the child can experience their own areas of comfort and once they find the best option for themselves they go ahead and they train themselves into that area and this kind of varied exposure i don't think the child gets anywhere else and so i think schools do not kill but they help in developing the creativity of a child i'm sure maybe ken robinson should have had an audience like this to share their views <laughs> now i would like to ask the same thought process uh, uh, moving to uh, madam on her views like do you believe the school kill creativity i just want to see if you say yes definitely it's a yes uh, we don't kill uh, creativity always school is a place where it is creativity is nurtured i uh, i always feel that school is the on, one and only place where creativity is nurtured the best example is this two years of covid where every child had an opportunity academic and co-curricular many of us have seen this uh, the child learned sitting at home too so this itself is creative what best example can be given schools always give opportunity in different stages it is not that in one stage you will see the success i see one interesting thread coming out from all of three of you point there's one as you say the school gives them broader opportunity to try and explore for last 13 years or 15 years or 16 years from the grade the child starts um, one of the interesting point i i want to ask you mrs kalpana mohan uh, you mentioned about um, the system which we adopt today is mostly a british system and you talk about gurukul system so my question to you is trying to understand is if we had that system of gurukul system do you think this discussion wouldn't have been there and more probably ken robinson would have said see look up there is india is a country probably they know how to uh, nurture creativity i will say absolutely yes because actually ken robinson wouldn't have even thought of creativity in uh, thing and in fact when people were not even um, knowing what is uh, dressing normally then they were wearing leaves and walking around in the jungles we had universities we have to be very proud about it and we i will tell this in any of the platforms what i can say we have culture of uh, universities studying gurukula uh, teacher and the student gurus are the people who show the path which path you can go and you can be successful rather than you say this is the path you go there they never said that they always shown the path in, in which they are good at today we are talking about multiple intelligence to a very great extent in india the multiple integer concept start from day one in the family in the school in the outside world in the offices everywhere we have already followed multiple intelligence system whenever we say that somebody is good at and we give them the job then what is that it is called multiple intelligence you identify the predominant skill in that person that is what gurukul system did i want to make a small anecdote here. my way of telling everybody about how robust our indian system of education was 
in ramayana we all know that it is itihasa that thus it happened it is not a story it has happened when rama and sita along with lakshmana comes to dandakaranya lakshmana builds a small hut to stay in which he had made that kind of beautiful structure where the kitchen leads to the stream to get water and the room of sita and rama's entrance is seen to lakshmana but not inside and those people cannot see lakshmana be sitting outside guarding them such a kind of beautiful thing he did rama asked lakshmana i also went to the same gurukula how can you do this which i cannot then he answers vashishta was the person who knew that i am interested in building houses i am a civil person so he nurtured it much more than you did you also know it the basic structure you know but you didn't implement it because you were more into astra sastra and arrows and bows and things like that but i am the person who was interested in learning it so vashishta nurtured me from where the creativity started nobody would have been even thought about it in earlier days even today even today in small schools also the creativity of the people are absolutely nurtured in fact when somebody speaks over the ted talk the new talks and things like that we are all going behind them and finding out but are we really looking into what's happening in our schools see what i am working for is academy of creative teaching act is creativity is there why it is creative we knew the importance of creativity it started way back in 2000 by dr gururaj kachi so why it has come because we all know the value of creativity in the schools so that means to say it's not unknown to us there need not be no ted talks to tell us that whether we need to have creativity or not i'm not degrading anybody but for that matter indian education system was in the highest order from day one even today even with the british system even with the testing system we are not behind with creativity that's one thing i want to really really tell you maybe it is not completely taken up by the schools it is not because of that we don't have a common way of testing that's why no the testing is not the reason the time is the reason we are not able to give the time to the people so the creativity seems to be not showing up otherwise kids are creative you give them anything they do and they are all born creative not kids all are born creative if anybody makes anything in the kitchen and something went wrong a salt or sugar immediately we do something to make it up what is else what is creativity then the definition says that you are going to have new skills coming up when there is a something which is happening over the period of time that is what is creativity correct so what i feel is creativity is not that somebody else told in there the gurukul system was the most creative methodology of teaching and if that persisted in india we are the top education i wish uh, sir ken robinson was alive and <laughs> show him this talk of conversation um, and so also he was hearing from somewhere <laughs> yeah i hope he is doing this <laughs> yeah uh, my uh, i would like to move to a very next important question which um, i would like to see a broader other than india like general question maybe applicable to other countries uh, i would like to see what could be the reasons that hinders creative activity in the classroom or uh, I, my question could be re, i would like to re ask maybe like do you think parents and systems and expectations from the children is making uh, are the reasons for hindering creative activity in the classroom to certain extent yes yes is the answer is yes you asked the question at the beginning whether any parent in the ptm ask you that whether my child is creative the answer is no almost like 99% of the parent never ask that question they ask whether my child is good in studies good in sports what did he get and things like that but there are people there are people who are currently this nowadays maybe i'm seeing about the last decade of my career like maybe from 2010 11 to today they are having certain amount of change in mind they want children to be little more actively participating in co curricular and curricular related activities not only the textbooks reading and reproducing yeah, i am talking about this urban scenario but it is not true when i went to north karnataka recently for some of the schools visit i felt that even the rural and the people who are from a very very remote areas of the country also there are parents who wants the children to be more 
creative and pressureless way of learning now the trend is literally changing maybe it is the exposure through the media and people looking into other countries what they are doing and in our own country how they are doing how children are producing new things in different different schools and things like that but unfortunately the expectations of the parents from their children because they have nowadays one child one or two children in their their one they are very very uh, having all the aspiration pushed on them the father wanted to become a doctor mother wanted to become an engineer mother wanted to be a dancer everything is pushed on the child one child poor fellow so that is what has happened for some time now the pressures have to be eased out a lot of psychologists come in uh, people started telling about education how it has to be rendered to the children and so on and so forth there is a very slight modification happening in the behavior of parents but it is only very slight because there are aspiration there are pushing uh, things with parents and things like that so i i should sadly say yes the activities experiential learning is just started picking up but they were stopped because of the parents uh, intervention and it is sad but in spite of that the teachers on the schools so many schools tried bringing in creativity in the classroom that cannot be forgotten the same question i would like to ask survey madam uh, like you might have parents who are like from second or third generation who are well educated probably working in a companies which are looked up by people do you feel they are also responsible for hindering creative activities for child in the classroom and as well as at home parina ma'am you go first and i will take over yes santosh i agree with uh, kalpana ma'am to certain points a decade ago the, this was a scenario where uh, parents were more to academics but today uh, i see like the younger parents the next generation where they are newly admitting their students to lower grades they are uh, very much inquisitive eager to know what are all the other skills of course academics is the first priority that i always agree connected to it today the thought process has changed to some extent saying what are the other skill development the school is giving mainly they look up at sports uh, let it be uh, the different languages what are the other languages given to the students what are the other creative clubs which are there at schools there are a lot of questions i'm glad that parents are having queries at least the queries towards all this when they admit the child this shows that the parents are now looking at the creative part of the child too this i have observed in past few years uh, the change in the thought process taking this cue from the parents the schools have always been working and i think this we have to put more and more thought process in building it up bringing lot of creativity in the school the main thing is we have to give opportunity for the students in our country pressure is more on scores we have to balance it we have a curriculum built on scores we have to also build on today's need so the need is equal balance of academics and the creativity so build in such a report where it has been equally balanced i would like to move to survey ma'am the, the parents who are coming to schools are more educated they understand the value of education they want that value to be passed to the child do you believe that uh, uh, they are not hindering the creative activity in the classroom or do you think the parents could be a reason for hindrance for creative activity in the classroom i would like to state over here that a large section of the parents who come to schools once again and i'm repeating what Uh, the other two principles did just state a large part of the population or the parents who are coming into school for either it can be an admission or a ptm or an inquiry about the board they inquire only about the academics of the child and not about the co curricular activities or the team efforts that the child has put uh, that large section needs to be addressed the thought process needs to be changed but also that the newer younger 
like you said the educated population that is walking into school they look at the creative aspect they look at the integration of creativity as well as learning so that as an educator or a facilitator in uh, the class it is very important that teacher ensures that there is the concept that is taught as well as some kind of fun activity for the child so that the child retains the concept that is taught to him or her and that is very important for all of us to focus on again i would like to mention uh, collaboration and communication are the key aspects over here in a classroom scenario where the child gets to improve their interpersonal skills develop confidence in themselves also learn about the concepts that are being taught in the right spirit of learning yeah one of the underlying point i'm seeing uh, from all the three panel members is <clears throat> you're talking about balancing uh, the requirement of academics versus the the skills which i see it one next i understand in order to do this we need an opportunity for uh, schools to do it and parents should do at home as well uh, but i one of the point i always have felt is like time table which is about like 35 minutes to 60 minutes in many schools and then the subject which change from one one period to the second period do you think is it affecting a lot of teachers or educators to try beyond academics if this is true how has a teacher or uh, individually in the past or principal of schools to try to fix this issue uh, this uh, question i did contemplate on this uh, before speaking out but uh, i think as educators and as leaders of the school we know that there are varied periods available to the children some can be light and some are uh, the heavier periods but when we are fixing the time table we need to make, do it in such a manner that the child has ample relaxation between two heavy periods so which means to say the time table should be a combination of lighter periods it can be anything it can be a performing art it can be a visual art or it can be a sports period or it can be a reading a library period i think these are all periods that the children enjoy thoroughly and once they are relaxed they are ready to come back into the next class be fresh for assimilating some more information about the next subject i think this mix and this balance in the time table is very important and as educators we need to keep a tab on that yeah i think a very wonderful suggestion uh, kalpana mom madam uh, like would like to take your uh, experience of managing this challenge in the school uh, especially when you have seen working with and varied schools in the past so what has been your experience see actually uh, to be honest i was always the feel that it's very important for the children to move in and out of the class okay so i don't want the kids to sit in the class all the time 24 by 7 when they enter the school till they go out Uh, i've been working as a principal and an educator in fact way back in 87 itself my classrooms will never be inside the classroom alone i always make the some kind of effort where the kids will relate to the subject in a different way rather than reading in the book so what we did in our schools and all we have compulsory read two hours of game every day in the beginning then one hour for the higher classes that was one of the thing i found out that finnish model where the interspersing of uh, children coming out of the class and doing activities outside in the open space all those things will bring in lot of breathing time for the children why they have to breathe why they have to have that kind of free mind is is because your mind becomes claustrophobic when you keep on in, uh, injecting things on your head the moment you are going to have some kind of breathing inside there is always a possibility that the children will start analyzing what has happened before the previous class or the next class sports is one activity that's different it is all the schools do that but there are some other things which can be brought in inside the classroom say the time table what we are talking about the time table itself in the classroom 30 minutes 40 minutes the teacher can plan in such a way the classroom has got a certain amount of activity hand song so very simple simple things you know you can ask the children the the first standard or uh, child children normally if we don't introduce a word called fraction we normally say equal division or equally dividing things you give the children some idea how equally you will divide and ask them to draw something 
draw something which is equal looking both the sides you know i am telling you way back in 1998 or 2 2000 i think i was teaching first grade mathematics then i was tell i got a child drawing titanic ship half inside and half outside is it not creativity so <laughs> what i am trying to tell you is children are creative and you give make opportunities inside the classroom in the time table time table is not an hindrance without time table the school will go haywire we need to have time table but the 30 minutes is in your hand as a teacher 5 minutes entry and 5 minutes exit so you have total 40 minutes class 30 minutes is with you you can create activities on those lines so that you complete the syllabus at the same time in the kindle the creativity in the kids that is possible most of the places the lesson planning organizing the classroom is only the solution rather than saying blaming it on time table it is possible because lesson plans are the plan which a teacher create for herself to take in the class why she cannot introduce new things and make the children on tap come on here do something new you can do that because in, in in our classes what i want to tell you is children should be given that one small little opportunity to put their thought process out it is possible it will not stop the syllabus from getting completed at the same time their creativity comes so time table will never ever be a hindrance time table is a very big tool you get that 30 minutes is mind wins is a nice thing right so it's very oh. nice. and time table will never hinder the creativity that's one thing which i can definitely tell you yeah i think you your perspective i like it you talk like you saying that okay you are performer on a stage now you get 30 minutes of time and you do the best so that you you I'm the boss you, of my class when i enter into the classroom i am the boss i will take my time and i will do what i want to do along with the task syllabus which i have to complete yeah i think wonderful i think, uh, I think uh, that one little opportunity that you give the child to express themselves in class you never know how much it uh, boosts their confidence level you never know you must be making tomorrow's leader in your own classroom you know it's very important to give the students that kind of opportunity in each teaching class Yeah, I think a very interesting new perspective. I'm hearing it. Uh, with uh, with schools implementing NEP 2020 and large number of electives which are coming into place, do you think this would help in achieving 21st century skills that include creativity, or do you see this as one more subject which is getting added up? Well, uh, the system, the education system, has undergone a change. Definitely, after 34 long years. yeah the educators are, are really thrilled about it and i think uh, i have uh, our honorable prime minister shri narendra modi modi ji to thank for that to bring in this change yes the 21st century skills definitely need to be promoted in all students i think we need to move according to the times covid has taught us to move according to the times and these skills i think have enhanced more so in the last 21 months that we have been in the online and offline modes these skills have become a part of us the, these skills will continue to remain with the schools to a large extent can uh, achieve these uh, skills by including these creative aspects in our regular classroom sessions it need not be something separate because uh, i did hear you saying is it just another subject added on definitely it is not something that is added on it has to be introduced during the subject time introduced along with uh, whatever we are doing and uh, so that uh, it uh, you know enhances the learning as well as teaching process okay but uh, ma'am do you see uh, that you will need a kind of teachers who are going to be looking at the way it has been thought to introduce so do you see the challenge of finding teachers for those courses because there are so many schools across want to implement this uh, i think uh, in the last 21 months teachers have proved more than anything else to everybody else that they are capable of adapting to any and every kind of change covid was something that we did not foresee yes there were teachers who took time to learn but they learned it and they said no we have to do it for the betterment of the students so a teacher will always or a facilitator will always do the best for their students however possible however difficult it is for them to learn they have done it they have proved that they are capable of it in fact they have explored 
themselves during these times and it's been an eye opener so i think uh, looking for such teachers will not be difficult um teachers who are willing to learn all the time i think those are the kind of facilitators we are looking for <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. Yeah, come to me, madam. Uh, yeah. Your views on NEP 2020 implementation with the new yes. electives coming up? See, NEP is one of the, um, if implemented properly, underlying that, is the best way of uh, education system. It, we, we, India will become educationally strong and a superpower. I can call it as implemented properly. Uh, having said that, the electives what we are giving is not the children will have more number of subjects to study. I want to make it very clear. The electives are the kind of lot of dishes in front of you, which one you want to choose. So the kids will not study more than five to six subjects. It's not that. The kids having opportunity to explore in different, different subjects. So you as a school, how many other subjects you are going to offer? That's your discretion. Nobody is going to say you must give 20 subjects. No, it's not possible. As you just rightly said, a school may or may not afford that many teachers for say one child taking one subject. I'll have one teacher for that. It may not happen uh, practically impossible, but there is a possibility that the schools can decide that I will give more number of subjects so the children can choose from. In fact, already some of the schools, some of the boards, uh, probably IGC, ICSC board itself normally allows the children after 8th grade to drop math and science and take some other subject. They do it. It has been happening for a long time. And in Cambridge syllabus, international syllabus, it is there all the time that you can choose subject after 8th grade, whichever subject you want to choose. It's there. They say that we are offering 70 subjects. All the, all the 70 subjects are there in the school? No. The school will give certain subjects which is possible for them to give they should have infrastructure they should have the teachers proper teachers for that and so on but having said that how many teachers you want to take are they ready the teachers with the subject will be ready to teach the subject there is no issue as uh, Surabhi ma'am rightly put the teachers are ready to teach they have taken the challenge with very great i'm telling you not our modern teachers a teacher who has been teaching Kannada for 17 18 years no, she doesn't even know how to type in the computer and she started working with the computer online lesson plan and, and so on and so forth that's the kind of determination and commitment the teachers have even though the most thankless job and underpaid job is teaching and the teachers have proved the pandemic time that they are the best because they tried their level best they, you know one teacher in one of the uh, areas dr kaji was telling this to me he was in, in Rajasthan, one teacher, he kept to a small area, broken house. And she made a small blackboard there, put two bricks and kept her mobile phone and wrote on the board and taught the children. She doesn't even know what was internet before. So that's the kind of commitment the teachers were having. So now that coming to teaching different subjects, they have no issues because if I have studied this, why I will not teach that? I have said that the schools should be ready to give that many subject first as an elective and it is not going to be an additional the electives are not additional it's a part of thing always um, ICSE writes 10 subjects as an examination and CBSE writes 5 subjects as an examination it will not be one addition here one addition if the children choose to take that subject that's what it is so if there is no additional burden or anything it is another way of looking at you choose what you want to choose that's a very nice thing to happen. NEP gives that opportunity. The teacher's appointment, teacher's uh, um, allocation and teachers coming in, will they be able to do? It is absolutely not a correct question at all. Teachers will be able to do. That is for sure. Even today, when you go to any part of the country, remotest of all the places, all teachers look up you when you are training. Uh, I want to learn more. I want to give the best in the class. So now, because the things are available on the internet, one uh, click of the mouse, you get all information. Only only thing is you need to know how to read English. That's it. But, or any other language for that, Kannada or Hindi, whichever the language they want to teach. But, is it enough? No. When I'm a chemistry teacher, I empower myself in chemistry and I learn new things what's happening around in chemistry. Or I'm going to say, what is it when the world is doing thinking of chemistry, how it has happened, how that vaccination came in, it's just comfortable chemistry. 
So those things which the teacher understands and teaches the children in the classroom, they say they will have the respect from everyone. So that's what the teachers are doing today because they have the information, they have the resources. Only thing is they need one pack. Come on, let's do it. Then they do it. So NEP, if at all is again, I underline that line. Implemented properly, that's the best type of education, and we will become educational superpower if it is. Okay, wonderful. Thanks for your interesting perspectives. So I would yeah. like to add over here, ma'am. Rightly said, they learned how to work on a computer. It was not only on a computer. There were teachers who could not afford a system. They didn't have one at home. What did they do? They did it on their mobile phones. Everything, formatting, typing a question paper, sending it to the office, keeping it confidential, or projecting it on the screen for the children. They learn to do it on that little screen of theirs. I've been working in ICSC uh, schools where electives are being introduced. Uh, they are aware of uh, electives. So I think schools like this have no issues. Let it be one elective or some more electives which will be added on. It is not going to make a difference for students as they're aware of it. In certain curriculums, if electives have to be added, it is not a big challenge at all. As rightly said by Mrs. Kalpana Mohan and Mrs. Surabhi, that everybody are now getting adapted to new things okay i think already take your experience of your board and then you're trying to correlate and tell that this is how you look at it uh, mrs kalpana mohan i would like to ask you one question which already asked you and you did answer it but i would like to little uh, stretch it beyond it i asked you how how often do parents ask a teacher how creative is my child and you said no and 19 percent of parents don't ask this question my question to you is why don't they ask this question because when the parents come to school, they are more um, interested in how the child is academically successful. Creative thing they do see at home. If you ask any of the parent at home what the child is doing, you know my child can do what? I can, my child can chant a very beautiful shlokas. My child can paint. My child can ride a bicycle very well. All those things they will tell you. And you know my child will ride, ride a bicycle and he will be able to repair it also in a very nice way. They tell you. So their part is happening at home and they feel that whatever they are doing at home creatively or not creatively new ways is enough for them i come to school to understand what my child is doing academically why i will ask about creativity but if a teacher also say you know what your child did that then okay ma'am but how much mark he got they want to know my child is coming to your school to do academics and little out of little uh, co-curricular maybe sports activity or something which may or may not have creativity. What is creative in running 100 meters? Nothing, the child has to run. So those things probably the parents want to know. But my, as a child, as a mother, I know what my child is creative is all about. In fact, they may, uh, but you know, madam, are you thinking that your child is creative? You can ask the parent, they will tell you stories. So that's how the things are. The PTMs and the parents coming to school to just ask how my child is doing academically, probably little look co-curricular. So that only there is no question on creativity. And another very important thing is creativity is being the word which is coined in the 20, 21st century skills and education 4.0, etc. But it was all ingrained from the day one in all the creative educational activities. So maybe it's like a drinking water or something. It's not that very special. Maybe that is due to that parents are not asking. But if a teacher thinks he has to create that kind of awareness to the parent, when they are giving the reports, if they say a few things about the creativity of the child and how it can be nurtured, you know your child draws so well and his thought process is very different. Why can't you take him to somebody who can uh, give them more support on that? Your child's voice is so sweet. In the choirs, he sings really well. And his way of putting across the song is very different, not, not like others. Even one small paper, he keeps in a very nice way. Your notebooks are kept very beautifully and he covers it very well. He writes his name in a different way. If you are going to tell all these things, probably the my parent next time, is he doing the same thing? Yes. But okay. we don't do it also. So why means it's again, I'm not saying it's not no fault of anybody, not a mistake. But basically, we are 
but tuned to such kind of questions what my child is doing academically what child is doing in our sports is the child is fine is it okay the we are not even talk about whether my child is coming to school punctually the whether the child can attend the classes that also nobody asks question so yeah. where we are we are actually it, i'm not saying again it's a fault we just simply don't do it that's it <laughs> Yeah, but it's still like a logical arguments and thought process. It it is. I I feel it is right. I would like to add on with you. Yes. They don't see creativity as a process of learning. They take it as a separate component. Thus, they never ask how creative my child is. They feel that okay, if uh, rote learning is happening in the class and the child is answering the questions in the paper and they are scoring ninety five percent and above. my child is going to be a successful human being and and is going to be successful in any career that they choose that's the basic bottom line for the whole uh, process that happens during a ppm <laughs> just to add on what this ma'am says it is not a subject for them it's not okay, yeah they which is to be learned for their promotion or their next term admission or anything we all know it has to be ingrained but there is nothing that we need to ask about it it is not that in creativity how many marks you got we never we don't have that probably that's one of the reason that they don't ask also that's a that's also in one of the points which we can add madam do you have any adding, points right yes yes adding on to both the principles at school creativity is just uh, limited to the art room and music but the same parents what i have observed is See, they love to enroll their child back home to some dance classes singing any one music instrument any of these creative work outside the school yes they always think it is outside the school when it comes to school it is only limited it is very very limited they feel it is mainly academic and we also somewhere truly work on these areas and uh, very little we work on the create we, we have to emphasize what i feel is we have to emphasize and keep telling them to be more creative give them more opportunities for creativity at school spend little time i think if a teacher if we can speak for 5 minutes it can be any subject about how creative is that subject how creative is a chapter uh, that is enough for a child to build on the creativity it should not be limited and for the parents also like it is just not out of the school it is also something which is existing in school too that has to be mentioned yeah so i i understand something which is a common a common thread i see is creativity is not only about coming up something new it is also about applying critical judgment uh, i would like to take a concluding remarks from all of you do you think or uh, do we see now something coming up out, out of a conversation is the ted talk by sir ken robinson to school skill creativity was more westernized thought process and probably were not very applicable to a lot of the countries no i will never say no again i want to tell you very clearly creativity is inborn and it's there in every indian's life and ken robinson is a person probably taken some few cue from indian context only and we are all creative today whatever we speak whatever we do at home also we are creative creative is not something to be injected in it's not that innovation and creations are a part and parcel of everybody's life creativity is a child is innovation so innovation is in there in every single place morning early, uh, five o'clock six o'clock you go to villages and the ladies put rangoli outside the house there is not creativity there is definitely yeah then why we have to say that creativity is somebody who is coming and telling what is creativity i'm sorry it is there in every indian's life i am very sure about it i saw a child who is selling strawberries near my house one boy 12 year old child he has it everything in a box you know how he says uh, you know um, aunty in kannada he says this strawberry if you eat no you don't need to put lipstick that boy is selling 12 year old boy 
I said, I don't wear lipstick at all. It's okay, auntie. You know, it is so nice. Why he is saying that? I'll tell you. That just above the building, there is a beauty parlor. So he tried to bring in that concept. Who taught him that? Is it not creativity? So those things, what I'm saying, nobody, no TED talk can bring creativity to anybody. Maybe they analyze it and tell how we are all speaking today. Uh, is there any going to be somebody is going to become creative all of a sudden hearing this YouTube? No, we are actually giving our perspectives and our opinions. But that doesn't mean nobody has got creativity. Everybody has got creativity. So creativity is not made, it is inborn. So I'm saying if schools are killing the creativity, the very clear big answer is no. Creativity will never be killed by anybody. It will stay and stay forever. Even in small, small things, it will be re revealed outside. You get 100 marks, you get a zero mark. That's different. All the people who are in advertisement agencies, all creative. And most of them might have been in back benches only. So we don't know about it. And I always feel when children are street smart and able to do things on their own, they are even academic, they are academically weak also. I can actually add a small example here. One child who never ever scored even 50 or 40% in the classroom. He made a project on cell, comparing it to a city. Beautifully she did. She put mitochondria as an energy giver. And she put lysosome as a BWSSB kind of thing. That's creativity. And the child has never scored more than 50 or 60. Where is the creativity and where is academics? So, there are two different things. Creativity is there with everybody. It can never be killed by anything, particularly by schools. Probably the schools can nurture it and support it to a great extent. And I'm really, really thankful that this topic came in. But creativity has to be nurtured too. Also, the schools should do it very, very consciously. And they can really bring on changes in the lives of the students. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, Survey, ma'am. You are, uh, well, I would like to go along with what um, Kalpana Kal Kal just said that uh, creativity is inborn and I think they just need to tap that and um, they will do wonders for themselves. Uh, we tend to push uh, all the students into different sections like take science, take commerce. They may not even be interested in all that. Somebody might just like uh, to learn about different types of cuisines. Somebody might like to taste food. Uh, so, you know, those are, those are different kind of creativity, creative aspects of learning. And it is a part of learning. Not everybody is good at it. But we need to accept it as, um, a, you know, a, a society that, okay, there are varied kind of people and they're going to channelize themselves in different directions. Creativity is there in each one of us. It's just the way we uh, bring it out in different uh, places. Some might sing, some might dance, some might put rangoli, like Nam said. Some might have uh, selling tactics. All that boils down to the inborn talent of a person. And if tapped in the appropriate manner, I think the person will excel. Yeah. Thank you, madam. Uh, Thank you so much. Yeah. So, madam, your concluding remarks. Creativity is seeing the same thing, but thinking differently. I will repeat, creativity is seeing same thing, but thinking differently. So it is different way how people think, different way how people create. So beautifully, examples are given by Mrs. Uh, Kalpana Mohan. In every field, India is the best place where a lot of creativity is seen when compared to the rest of the world be the culture the tradition if you see every place like the stories told by the grandmother the grandparents is much more creative which i think we are missing it today which i might not be able to do it so creativity lies there tell a story allow the child to cook yes safety is important safety tell them yes take Look at the safety part of it, train them, but yes, allow them to do it. They will definitely be very, very creative. That's how I think we are doing much better today. Our, our children are more creative today, but that opportunity need to be triggered. If that can be done, I think 
this is the best place where we are standing today in the world that is where we see a lot of global leaders across who are been taking over the other countries because i think this place where we have learned to think different so i completely agree to it the question what you have asked like the creativity in india or in schools in india we definitely don't kill and this is a place where creativity is nurtured is created not today i think we are the pioneers of it we are the pioneers <laughs> yeah I, I think I wish um, uh, Sir Kendra Bunsen was a teacher in one of the school in India. Maybe his talk would have been something else. So I assume that um, I wish he had was there for at least one year teaching in some school here. Maybe we are coming out with an idea of saying that okay, Indian schools don't kill creativity. At least maybe a topic which I foresee of conversation which is coming out. Uh, I thank you from the bottom of my heart, sharing something very interesting perspective about creativity, the way the world is looking at it. And probably we change your perspective in trying to bring the reality of what it exists in Indian context. Thank you very much. Stay safe, healthy, and happy.